Welcome to Daily Devotions with John Dyer. We're doing a series looking at people God uses throughout the Bible and today we're going to think of John the Baptist together and the scruffy preacher. Our key verse today is taken from Matthew chapter 11, it's verse 11, Jesus speaking and he says, Truly I tell you, among those born of women there is not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew 11 verse 11. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. Like Jesus, his birth was foretold by an angel and he was named before his birth. We read in Luke 1, 5 that both his parents were descendants of Aaron. This means that John's future was already planned out for him. Following the line of Aaron and his father, he would have been expected to become a priest of Israel. If John had followed the family business, he would have had the life of honour among the people. Financially, he would have been secure. Yet, this was not John's calling. As the angel Gabriel spoke about his birth, he says in Luke 1 verse 17, And he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the heart of the parents of the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John's calling was not to be a priest but a prophet like Elijah, and consequently he turns his back on the comfort that he could have had and sets out for the wilderness to prepare the way for the Lord. And throughout church history, there have been many who were called to leave comfortable lives behind to follow God's calling. When Jesus calls the first disciples to follow him, they left everything behind. Many missionaries left the comforts of home to travel the distant lands to preach the gospel. Hudson Taylor, for example, left what could have been a comfortable job in the medical profession to travel to inland China and proclaim the gospel. I wonder if we respond the same way. Are we willing to leave our comforts of home behind for the sake of Christ? This doesn't always mean travelling to some distant land. It could be helping out in a soup kitchen or a children's ministry. But are you willing to leave your comfort zone for Jesus? John's message was simple. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Matthew 3 verse 2 It was not a popular message with the religious leaders of his day, but it was the message that the people needed a year. Interestingly, John didn't go throughout the city preaching like Jonah did. His repentance wasn't one of travelling ministry. John was alone in the wilderness, but the people went out to him because they recognised the power of God in the message he was proclaiming. Often in our witnessing, we don't understand the power of the gospel. We think we need to come up with compelling arguments. We understand the advanced apologetics before we can share the gospel with anyone. While there's a place for these things, these don't affect the power of the gospel message. Paul wrote in Romans 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. John's message was simple, but it was anointed. We also should have the same confidence in the message that God has given us to proclaim. Historians believe that more than a million people travelled out into the wilderness to hear John preach. John didn't fit the mould of a respectable member of society. Matthew 3 verse 4 says John's clothes were made from camel hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food were locusts and wild honey. He was also a Nazarite from birth which means that he never shaved or cut his hair. John was one scruffy preacher. Here again we we reminded that the message is more important than the man. Matthew 3 5 6 continues. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all of Judea and the whole region of Jordan confessing their sins and they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John also recognises that it's not about him or his ministry, but that his job was to prepare the way for the Lord. John's whole life and ministry pointed people to Jesus. John sums up his role in John 3 verse 30 when he says, He, referring to Jesus, must become greater, that I must become less. The first steps of being powerfully used by God is recognising that it's all about his glory and not our own. Our motivation in being used by God should never be about self, but that he is praised. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you again this day for the way you choose to use us. Father, help us to realise that it's not about us, but it's all about you and your glory. Lord, we just want you to use us for your glory and that men and women, children, will turn to you in repentance. Father, we thank you for the power of the gospel. For if we thank you that we don't need to come up with compelling arguments or difficult apologetics, but we can preach the gospel clearly. We can share our testimony clearly and simply and expect you to do the rest. Father we thank you that you call us to be witnesses and in witnessing to what you've done in our lives you do the rest. Father help us then to proclaim the message of the gospel even in the most simplistic ways that men and women will understand it and respond to it. Lord help us also not to be too comfortable in our lives to leave and follow you. Lord if we are stuck in the 
place just because we are comfortable there. We pray that you will shake us up a little bit and move us on to where you're calling us to be. Father, help us to stay then, to be responsive to you, to step out in faith, to step out of our comfort zone and to witness and proclaim the gospel. Father, we thank you for your love and the Holy Spirit which empowers us. In Jesus' name, Amen.